Hello there. Welcome to the Gemini New Moon chat and our the start of the manifesting challenge. Um, for those of you who um, are tuning in for the first time, my name is Chris Lumsden and I am an astrologer. I love the moon. I've been focusing on the moon and um, hey Angelica, welcome. And uh, I've um, completely shifted my focus of my practice over to the moon and um, really enjoy it. Love it. Hi, Trisha. Hey, Susan, you're here too. Nice to see you. So um, I, I'm trying to figure out, I said we would do the people that are actually here to um, do charts for for them. And I'm trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> I have a couple of ideas. Um, what I think we'll do is uh, we will get started, do some talking, and then um, when it comes to looking at charts, uh, <laughs> whatever occurs to me is what we'll do. Because I'm not sure, actually, the way I was doing it before seems a whole lot easier right now. Anyway. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to address is um, the, uh, the manifesting challenge. And um, for those of you that are going to tune in later, um, you'll want to catch the replay, and I'll mention that again later because you're not here. <laughs> so the very first thing you will want to do to manifest is choose something to manifest. Right? Hey, Jessica. Um, right? You know, in order to manifest something, you have to know what it is you're going to manifest. Hey, Jeffrey. Happy birthday. <laughs> it's everyone, it's Jeffrey's birthday. So the way I focus on things to manifest, I know that following the moon in my chart, at the new moon and the full moon, hey, Erica, is the opportunity to bring in new energy, to release um, energy that doesn't serve me. So at the new moon, hi, Laura. At the new moon, we look at where the new moon lands in our chart, um, specifically. <laughs> we do this with everything. Hi, Christy. And Christy's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> hi, Stephanie. So you know, with anything, like uh, you may hear people, uh, there's all kinds of astrology information online. Um, always look at your chart. Um, great. So, you know, there's talk about Uranus moving into Taurus. Well, go get your chart out and see where the beginning of Taurus is and see what house it's in. And that's how it's going to affect you. If it's hitting a planet, it will you'll feel it more. You know, we're born, <clears throat> we're born with this blueprint. Um, I apologize that I'm looking down here instead of up there. <laughs> I have my my computer is eight and a half years old, literally. And I bought one of those really gigantic like Macs. So my desktop, you know, really big Mac, and it's been awesome. Um, and I'm crossing my fingers that it lasts a while longer. But it's a long way from, from you know, where I'm seeing comments and stuff and where the camera is. It's way up there. <laughs> so if I look like I'm just looking right there, I apologize. Um, okay, so always look at your chart. We come into this world with this blueprint um, and I can't even stress how amazing it is to have this blueprint. Um, it, has, it, it has saved me so much. You have this blueprint that shows energies that you hold within yourself. You will, you'll hear people say, as above, so below. So like, you know, the moment you took your first breath, the sky was in a certain position, and that's reflected in your birth chart. And that is reflected in your life. Um, and 
planets uh, um, have, you know, a wide range of the way they behave, a wide range of action. Um, you know, people, you know, a lot of people identify with their sun sign. Um, the sun sign is what we're learning to be, so we're not already super good at it. But, you know, if you think about somebody with a Gemini sun, you're not all the same. <laughs> you're not all the same. If you think about twins, you know, here it is Gemini season. Twins is always kind of a Gemini thing. Um, uh, my, my cousin has twin boys that were born on my birthday. So exciting. And they're, I think they're going into eighth grade now or something. They're still pretty young. They're complete opposites. They're using, and they have the same chart, you know, just a few minutes apart. They're using the energies of that chart differently. We always have to take into consideration the soul that, the soul that comes with the chart. Um, if you believe in that sort of thing, and I do, I believe um, our soul is dancing around on this earth a bunch of times, trying out new skins. <laughs> Anyway, hey, Jessica. So I'm not sure what you wrote there. C dot div division sign. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> so, so when it's a new moon, you look and see where it affects you. And that is you look at your chart and you see. So this new moon is at 22 degrees and 44 minutes of Gemini, which is um, super cool also because it's, those are master numbers, 22, 44, those are master numbers in numerology. So that's really neat. So you look to see where that is in your chart and that's where your opportunity is to manifest something. Manifest a new way of being, manifest a thing, manifest anything. Okay, so you look there. And then you also look to see if it's touching other planets in your chart. And with new moons and full moons, you stick to the planets that are right next to it. I never go past four degrees. Um, sometimes I see one at five degrees and I'm like, uh, maybe. And sometimes if I've done a planner for you, um, I'll say, and kind of close <laughs> because it's, so close, but really within four degrees, you don't really, you don't want to go beyond there because um, the moons move through the chart quickly. Uh, a moon will go through a sign in two and a half days. You know, it goes through all the signs in 30 days. So it's a quick mover. And when it strikes, it's like, um, I want to say it's just, you know, momentary. It's like this, at this point, um, because, you know, sooner or later that, that moon is going to hit that planet that's 10 degrees away um, at some point. So only look within four degrees. Uh, okay. And then you see what house it's in. And there are 12 houses in astrology and 12 different areas of your life um, that you can you can manifest in. So somebody posted they have a seventh house this new moon is in their seventh house okay seventh house is house of partnerships it's the house of coming together with another person for a common goal so that's marriage that's business partnerships that's um a, a coaching relationship that's um a therapy relationship. It's a best friend relationship, that sort of thing. And um, so you're going to want to look at Gemini energy and apply it to the house. Okay, so Gemini, this is a super moon. Super moon just means it's closer to the earth than usual. We have a few of them every year. It's not rare, <laughs> but it is 
extra energy. It's uh, like if you think of, if, go and look at a tide chart that shows you all the, um, all the tides on various days and go and look at what the tides are going to do on Wednesday. It, there's going to be m m more of a difference. Like it's going to be a lot lower and it's going to be a lot higher because the moon is closer. The moon pulls on the water and we are made up of a lot of water, <laughs> you know, 90%, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, so it's going to affect us more because it's closer. It's affecting the water more and we're made up of water. All right. So that means there's a little more juice in this moon to use uh, to set an intention. Let's see, Laura, you wrote mine is next to the new. Um, yours is next to your moon in the eighth house. Is that what you're saying? You said next to new moon in eighth house. So if it's next to your it's next to your moon, um, if you have a planner or if you're a member in um, my new group, I have an entire list of what to do when the moon touches a planet in your chart. And it'll give you specific questions to think about um, when setting your intention. If it's your moon, that's your emotional body. That's where you feel safe and secure. So you want to think about feeling safe and secure. Um, a Gemini, a Gemini moon doesn't feel safe and secure in rigid ideas. They like to dabble around and see what else is out there. All right. Um, I'm losing my train of thought very easily today. So, yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, so, you know, you look and you see what house it's in. That's the area of your life where, the, where you're, you can manifest and you apply the energy of the sign to it. So today, uh, Wednesday, it's Gemini or tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. <laughs> the new moon is tomorrow. Um, a really interesting also, uh, Wednesday is um, Wednesday's Mercury's day. Uh, that's, that's where we get, that's where the, the, the name comes from. If you're in, um, in, in France, in the French language, it's Mercury. It's so it's, like literally Mercury, Mercury, it's, it, that's where they get the name for Wednesday. So it's, it's super cool because Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So that's an added kind of extra oomph to, um, to this new moon. Christy says, will my birthday being on this new moon add anything special? So in astrology, um, there's such a thing as a solar return chart and you pop in your information uh, like astro.com, you can pull them up there. Um, you can pull up all kinds of charts there. Uh, that's an hour-long tutorial in itself, but you can fumble around and figure it out. <laughs> You're a Gemini. You like that stuff. So um, so the solar return chart gives you a glimpse of what the planets are doing the very minute that your sun um, is the exact same degree. Now, sometimes that's a day before. Sometimes it's a day after. Um, it may not be on the new moon specifically. Um, it, it will. So if you think about that, so there's a day on either side, it could be. And also think about the fact that the moon travels to, uh, through one sign in two and a half days. You may or may not have uh, a new moon kind of year. Um, and also, you know, you want it to be, um, fairly close to the sun. So a new moon kind of a year for your birthday is, um, you know, a whole year of fresh new starts. It's a whole year of, of new things coming in. Um, it's like a blank slate, you know, you get to start fresh. That's kind of, if you think of it as, you know, a new moon where you bring, you bring some, something in. Um, same thing applies. So um, you'll, you'd have to do a solar return chart to see if you actually are having a new moon year or not. More than likely, you are. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. So Gemini energy. Hang on. 
Hi, Krylin. So actually what I want to do right now while I'm thinking about it, um, if, um, if you want me to consider your chart for being right, you're, you're here already. Um, type me in the comment box. I'll write your name down and assign you a number. And then I have, I have dice. <laughs> so just type in me if you want me to look at your chart. Okay, so Gemini energy. Gemini, and I'm feeling very Gemini right now, is um, lots of information gathering. Gemini, okay, oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> Laura, Erica. <laughs> All right, I'm going to scribe to scroll. Hang on, let me write these down. I'm sorry. So let's see, Susan's one. Susan, Angelica, Angelica, Laura, Erica, Jessica, Trisha, Stephanie, Christy. Okay. Craylin and Perry. Okay. All right. You have to stick around now. <laughs> all right. Gemini is the sign. I'm going to start all over with the Gemini stuff. Gemini is the sign um, of the twins. And like I said in the newsletter, or I said in the, I also did a video in the, in the membership site. But so if you think of twins, they come into this world together. They are raised together. They're raised as like a unit. You know, like if you have an older brother or sister, you're raised at kind of different um, different times. Like, you know, he's two and you're, you know, four. So there's that difference. But twins are raised at the same time. They, they go through the same experiences at, in a similar time frame. They're they're bonded in you know in the uterus for nine months they're like together and so there's this energy um you know that goes from one to the other that is uh you know you don't even have to talk it's just an under you understand each other but also twins um sometimes um, develop their own language or um just their own like inside jokes <laughs> you know there's this symbiotic um, partnership where information is being shared back and forth gemini is ruled by mercury mercury is the messenger mercury was the the one that traveled from the um where the gods were to the underworld with messages back and forth it was the only one that could do it Mercury is the only one that could travel into the depths of Haiti, into the Haiti realm, and come back. Uh, everyone else would have to stay, <laughs> but not Mercury. Mercury is able to go back and forth, just like Mercury is able to go from your head to your heart and back again, from your head to somebody else's head and back again. There's this exchange of constant information back and forth. Gemini wants the facts. Gemini wants the information. Gemini wants to share the information. Um, it does no good for it all to remain uh, in the database and, you know, locked up in the head. It does no good there. It needs to come back out again. So if Gemini takes in information and shares it takes in information and shares it um, as if, it, you know, the, it's Gemini's like the journalist um, finding out all the information <laughs> that they can, you know, that people don't tell that they have to like dig into and find. There's a little Scorpio there too, but um, there's listening. There's listening on many levels. And then there's sharing on many levels. Uh, 
Gemini is not just a computer, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's not just, um, yeah, it's not just a computer hashing out the data. It's, uh, it, it's also after it receives the data, puts it in a usable format, so to speak, that other people can understand. And when they put it in that usable format, they're not uh, philosophizing, philosophizing on the right or wrong of it, or um, that's not what I believe, so I, this information isn't for you. They just present it. Um, they make it easy for you to gobble up, but they don't tell you what to think about it, if that makes sense. So at this new moon, you want to look at where it lands in your chart and you want to apply that information gathering, that zest for different ideas and thoughts and, you know, um, all, the, all the richness of the world. It's just so interesting. Like I have Gemini down at the, at the, at the bottom of my chart, you know. For me, home is ideas and learning and and studying and sharing with all of you. Hey, Karen. Yep, I'm live. <laughs> you can go back and watch the beginning of it. We started 24 minutes ago or 22 because I think I was a couple minutes late. Glad that you were here, though. Um, so, <laughs> so <clears throat> you want to apply that to the house. So that seventh house person wants to apply that um, exchange of ideas with a partner. Let's bounce ideas off of each other. Let's, you know, let's see what, th see what this is. Let's see what that is. Let's, you know, figure all this out together and learn and experience. <clears throat> okay, so that is, um, Karen, if you would like me to um, look at your chart, just type in me. Um, I've, I've made a list so far of people that are already here, and I'm going to roll some dice. All right, so we're going to look at some charts, and we're going to apply that. So let me, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Karen. Okay, so I have eleven, so I'm going to use two dice. That'll give us up to twelve, except that Omits number one. Susan, you know what? Susan, I'm doing you first. And then I'll roll the dice. <laughs> and um, you'll have to bear with me. This is the only time I think I'll do it this way because um, I, I have a lot of charts and this is only half of them. So hang on while I flip and look through for Susan's chart. And if I see somebody else's chart that... It's a really awful way to do this, but we will get through it. Oh, good. There it is. Okay. Susan's chart. Okay. So we're looking for Gemini, 22 degrees, 44 minutes. Each um, degree has 60 minutes, just like a clock. Um, so 44 minutes means it's almost to the next degree. So if you just look for 23 degrees, you'll be okay. So, and Gemini, Gemini is orange on here. Show you. Here is, Gem that's what Gemini looks like. Okay. So, and Taurus right here is a sign before Gemini. So we start counting from that end. And we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 22, 23, right here. And then I look down and I see right down here, 10th house. So for Susan, um, this is in your 10th house. And I want to also, um, uh, another little tidbit of information. You may or may not have Gemini at the beginning of that house. So Susan, for you, you have Taurus that starts your 10th house. So Taurus is the dominant energy that um, looms over your entire 10th house. So Gemini there, it's still there, but um, it isn't the 
dominant thing. So when I tell you you're going to want to um, think of a Gemini intention for your 10th house of career, uh, your reputation, your place out in the world, um, it's the most outward representation of you. So it's the you that everyone can see. <laughs> it's the emperor that has no clothes. <laughs> so ten, So let's just go with career. And if you um, want to, if you have something specific that you're kind of thinking about, type that in. Another thing to remember is when we set an intention, the time before the new moon, today, um, half the day tomorrow, because it's at 12, 1243 Pacific. So um, for me, half the day, um, for some of you, the full day, that's the darkest time. That's the time for letting things marinate in, in yourself. Letting the idea of Gemini, letting the idea of 10th house, letting the idea of what's going on with you right now, just kind of gelling in, just gelling. So what you do now is you just kind of put out some ideas. A really good idea is to just kind of write down lots of different ideas. Um, anything that comes to mind, you know, put it down in a journal on a piece of paper. Brain, you're doing a brainstorm, basically. So you said, oh, you have a metaphysical shot. Oh, fabulous. Okay, so um, if I were to just, you know, pull out of the air an intention, it would be um, your career as a metaphysical shop owner is you want to make sure people understand that they come to you for all kinds of metaphysical ideas. You're like the library of information, okay? Right, okay. Um, you know, you're the, you're the go-to. Another thing we think about with Gemini is they're the person with all the information. They're the networker. They're the ones that people go to to get the information because they're the ones that know everything. They've got it. They, you know, they've got their ear to the, ear to the ground. Hi, Martha. You know, ear to the ground. They, they've got it. Um, they know what's going on. They can hook people up with other people. Like you may keep at your shop a database of, you know, really fantastic readers um, or energy workers, that sort of thing. And people come to your shop to, you know, get that information. People come to your shop to learn about metaphysics. Okay? That's like super easy. <laughs> Having events at the shop this month. So your intention can be that the information goes far and wide, that um, people know that um, Gemini also can hold many different ideas at once. Um, things that don't even go together. You know, black and white, we're holding it together. <laughs> Good and bad, we're holding it together. Um, all these ideas that are like even opposites of each other. You, you know, you're holding it all. Okay? So, you know, have some clarity around how your customers get that information. Okay? All right, so, Martha, if you want me to look at your chart, type in me. <laughs> and I am going to roll the dice and see who's next. All right, we've got number eight. Number eight is Christy. Perfect, since you're, you, it's tomorrow, your birthday's tomorrow, is that what you said? Me. Okay, Martha's number 12. Okay. So let me attempt to find Christy's chart. So 
sorry. <laughs> Everyone can take a nap now. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, just to re while I'm looking, just to reiterate, manifesting day number one challenge is come up with an intention. That's all. Don't do anything else. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> I know I have your chart, Christy. Catherine, you're here too? Okay. All right, I'm going on my desktop. You won't be able to see the chart, but I will. <laughs> Taking a while to load. Okay, so I have Christy's chart. So Christy, your um, where are we? So your sun is at twenty-one and fifty-four minutes. So it is essentially one degree away. And I wish I could show you her chart. She has her um, sun is like one degree away from going from the eleventh house into the twelfth house. The new moon actually, let's see, 12th house is 2312. The new moon is technically in the 11th house, but when it's within one and a half degrees, okay, when it's within one and a half degrees of the next house, you have an option. You can do the next house um, with. Uh, with um, what I learned from Stephen Forrest is uh, you push it into the next house. Um, signs don't move, but, <laughs> but you can push a planet into the next house. So I would read either just the 12th house or since it's technically in the 11th, read 11th and 12th, but both. So either just 12th or 11th and 12th. <clears throat> so if we just do the 12th house, and your son, too, I would read you as a 12th house son, even though it's in the 11th. That might change everything for you. <laughs> so this is hitting your son because it's in one degree, within one degree. And it's um, let's just use the 12th house for right now, and then we'll talk about if we use both. 12th house is um, the hidden realm. It's what you don't see. It's uh, it, not even what you're consciously aware of. Um, it's uh, what happens in meditation. It's your connection to the divine. It's um, your subconscious. It's the, the programming that you aren't even aware of that's going on with you. Twelfth house, Gemini. Intention could be something like uh, an opportunity to have some conversations with uh, some hidden folks, <laughs> um, past loved ones, uh, goddess energy, uh, talking with Jesus or Mary, that sort of thing. Um, you want to set an intention of sharing information back and forth. Oh, Stephanie, okay, thank you. I'll put, let's see, I'll put Catherine's as number seven, Catherine. Okay, so that's just for 12th house. If you use 11th and 12th house, it's in a community format. 11th house is community. So um, groups and associations. Uh, maybe you want to go to a meditation class with the intention to communicate with your higher self, your higher self, your subconscious, the divine. Um, or you want to just be around people and sharing ideas with them about uh, anything, <laughs> anything really. Um, 
But if you're including that 12th house piece, there's that, that piece of um, communicating with the hidden. Okay. Does this make any sense at all? Is that, you know, so like I said, you brainstorm ideas about what you want to manifest for, for this time and you just write them all down. And when you're applying your son to it, your son is who you are learning to be in this life. So you are learning to be a 12th, 11th house Gemini son. So that's your target aim. You know, as you go through life, that kind of stuff is thrown at you and you're kind of tricked or forced into doing it anyway. So you might as well intentionally do it. Okay. All right, Christy. And happy birthday tomorrow. Let's pull another one. Okay, number four, double twos, is Erica. Are you still here, Erica? Okay. Gotta go through, gotta go through the stack again. I don't need that. Let's see. Trish is here. I'm pulling out the ones that are here, so it'll be quicker next time. Goodness. charts all right there's Erica okay all right Erica so 22 degrees 44 minutes on Erica's chart she's Gemini rising she's the go-to girl <laughs> she is all right so 22 degrees is like right here and that's in the first house so um, 1736 from 22 puts you over the four, the four degree. Um, yeah, if it were another degree, so that's like five degrees away. So honestly, I wouldn't pay any attention to the fact that it's near your ascendant because it's further than four degrees away. So first house. That's all about your style, yourself, your presence, how people um, see you when they meet you, your physical body, your, um, you know, the way you enter a room, your style. So for you, it's all, it's all about Gemini. It's all about, um, you know, the outstretched hand. It's nice to meet you. Hey, my name's Erica. What's your name? What do you do? Who do you know? Um, what do you know? Here's what I know. <laughs> Let's share some information. Let's get together and work through some things. Um, you know, the intention is, is purely uh, whatever you want people to know about you when they meet you. Whatever you want people to... Um, like if they go to your Facebook page um, and you want to be known as the person who um, in networks with people, um, has information, can share information, um, the, you know, that back and forth. How do you wrap that up all in a package so that people understand that about you? Does that make sense? <laughs> That's the first house. It's your style. 
You want a new wardrobe? <laughs> this is the time to ask for it. You know, it, it, anything that, um, you know, brings the Gemini awareness to others about you, right? Even though I know we, we've talked before about Gemini isn't really what you wanted people to see about you, but <laughs> now you understand why it's so awesome that they do. So, you know, put it together that way. Brainstorm, dump it out on paper, um, see how it feels. Tomorrow, tomorrow what we're going to talk about is how to set the intention. So today and up until I do the live tomorrow, it's just gathering information so that you can decide what it is you want to intend. All right. Now I'm going to roll the dice one more time. Erica, any questions? <laughs> and let's see who we get. Well, I got four again. <laughs> yes. So you clear the money blocks. You want people to know that about you. Like you have the information to, to get rid of those blocks. You're the girl. So how will they know that? How do you want it to appear? Well, one time for, um, I had, for one of my first house intention setting, I did the vision board of all the things about me that I wanted people to see. I did. Number 11. I find my paper. Karen. And I have your chart right here because I pulled it aside. <laughs> okay, Karen, are you still here? Now, Karen, I have to tell you, and I, I don't think I've ever told you this before, but Karen and I both are Aquarius suns with Scorpio moons. We share that. And it's a fun one. <laughs> You ever want to talk more about it? Hit me up. Okay, so Gemini for Karen is. There we go. <laughs> okay, Gemini for Karen is here. 22 degrees is right about there. And I look over and it's 12th house. Okay, so like I said for Susan, I think it was Susan. Now I've forgotten already. No, it was Christy. 12th house. Is all about the hidden. It's all about the subconscious. So what you want to consider setting for an intention is communicating with the subconscious, communicating with the hidden, the divine, the unseen. Um, you know, get the information. <laughs> you know, it's like get the information from your subconscious so that you can like use it. you know, to do your thing, right? It's what you do when you coach people, right? You dig into their subconscious, whether they know it or not. The Scorpio Moon people know how to do it. So, you know, your intention is all about the fact-finding about your own self, about your own subconscious, okay? So that's for Karen. Let's do one more. Three. That is Laura. Let's see. Do I have Laura's chart right here? I think I do. Yep. Okay. All right, Laura. Let's see if we got a different house to talk about. We do. All right. Gemini is here. Oh, I'm going backwards. Gemini is here. Twenty. 223 degrees is right here. And that, we follow it to the middle, is the eighth house. And you see that moon? So the moon is 18 degrees, 53 minutes. And that is within four degrees. So this new moon is activating your moon. Okay? So eighth house is is the house of 
um, it's the Pluto house, it's the Scorpio house. It's where we get juicy with other people, um, deep connection, deep vulnerable connection. It's also the house of other people's money. Um, you know, eighth house is sharing resources and you can share resources with a bank, <laughs> with a credit card company. You can share resources with them, a mortgage, a loan, um, a lever, a confident, somebody who you go through deep transformation with. Um, and it's Gemini. So Gemini wants to share information with them. Uh, you know, like, um, like with a lover, you know, pillow talk is chatty, <laughs> right? Because you, you want to talk, you want to hear about their day, you want to share your day, you, you know, you just want to have this communication going. So like, if you want to set an intention, you might, I have, I have no idea without talking with you, you know, if you're single looking married, I don't know. Let's say you're married. <laughs> if you want to set an intention to have this a deep, juicy relationship with the other, uh, I guess you're not. <laughs> if you want to have this deep, juicy relationship with another, you want to make sure you include the piece that you um, communicate freely all the time. You know, it's this open-ended conversation constantly. You know, I know what you're doing and you know what I'm doing. And, and we share what we're learning about each other and what we're learning about other people and about the world. And you are married 42 years. That's amazing. That's awesome. So this is the time to set that intention for like juicing up that relationship or simply um, a, an opportunity to um, get a loan for something, you know, house, car business um, alone and you know in that loan you want to choose a company that shares easily shares information with you so that you know what you're getting into they know what they're getting into that sort of thing okay I hope that helps all right so day one for the manifesting challenge as I said at the very beginning if you um, tuned in late go back to the beginning and listen to what i said because i don't remember what it was <laughs> i remember I, I wanted you to go back and listen <laughs> um the manifesting for day one just simply choose an intention brainstorm a list of, of all the different ways you can manifest something and then sit with it for the next day and a half Sit with it, let it gel until you, until you, you know, come up with something. Um, a great idea. I mentioned this in the newsletter. This is fluorite. Um, there's lots of different different fluorites. Um, the green one in particular is great uh, for you know, kind of holding on to while you're brainstorming, while you're journaling. You know, just hold it in the other hand while you write with the other. It's good for that kind of energy. Okay, so choose your, choose your intention. Tomorrow we'll talk about how to set your intention and lots of different ways to do that. And then, um, and then the rest of it is going to be some other stuff that if you want to like truly manifest, you're going to have to tackle <laughs> some fun, some not so fun, some eye opening, some not so eye opening. Karen, that's how you know you're in flow. You can't remember what you said on a live. I do that all the time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. So set your intentions. I'm going to do it too. This new one is hitting, like landing right on my Jupiter. So, so I want to expand my energy sharing, my idea sharing. So I got to figure out what that means for me. All right. Love to all of you. Bye-bye.